Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the live feed. Welcome to all of our followers. Uh, it's not yet eight o'clock, but welcome to Clarendon Fine Art live feed. We are super excited this evening. I can see you all coming through. Uh, I'd like to welcome all of our clients, our collectors, our friends, our families. Uh, thank you so much. Our sister gallery, White Wall Galleries, is also with us, and I do believe most of Gibraltar. So I'd just like to uh, welcome you all to the live feed this evening. We're very, very excited. Um, this is the hour we have all been waiting for. It is eight o'clock UK time, almost. I think we have one minute to go. Uh, we are going live, obviously, at eight o'clock UK time, 9 p.m., in Gibraltar. Uh, this evening we are really excited. Welcome to you all. We will be going live with our artist Christian Hook for the first time ever. He's never been on a live feed. We've never actually spoken to him live like this before um, and we're really excited. So I'd just like to welcome you all and uh, I do believe we have, uh, we have Christian Hook live. So bear with me. Let's have a little look. So we're going to welcome everybody here and I'm now just waiting for the man himself to join me here in London, live from Gibraltar. We have you. Welcome, Christian. How are you? Hello, everyone. Let me just put the volume up a little bit. Hi, everyone. Yes, let's, put, let's turn the volume up so everyone can, uh, can hear you. Christian, can you hear welcome me? from Gibraltar. How are you? Very good, thank you. Good. Well, listen, we have, I can see the numbers are going up and up. Um, I've just welcomed everybody to your live feed. This is really, really exciting for us, but also for you, um, because we, you've never done a live feed before. You've never, no, I've never done it. I've never done it, no. Fantastic. Well, we're, I'm not we're a fan of these things. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're really excited. It's eight o'clock. We are live with Christian Hook on the Clarendon Fine Art feed. Um, and uh, in this very surreal time, Christian, because we're obviously in, uh, I feel like a bit like we're in a bit of a lock in in lockdown. Um, where are you in lockdown? Because you can't be in your studio. Where are you right now? I'm at home. I'm in my house, in my flat in Gibraltar. Aha. Uh -huh. And has that been your so I've been locked. I've been stuck in here for a while now. Yeah. Like uh -huh. everyone else. Yeah. But yeah. I've done a lot of painting. I've done a lot of music. I've done like, um, I've done a lot of stuff. So and I've been busy. Big. So you've been keeping yourself busy. Keeping yourself busy painting, which is good. Yeah. Fantastic. Christian, tell us, I know we've got a lot to get through tonight. Thank you so much. Um, before lockdown, prior to lockdown, you took a, a very, very incredible trip, a very special trip um, to Cairo, which we know has given you the inspiration for your new series. Could you, can you tell everyone now that's coming on, could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, that was... a. Uh... A few months ago, I had a friend uh, who was a doctor here in Gibraltar called, called uh, Shireen Saleh, and, um, and she uh, was, had bought this, this place um, right underneath the Giza pyramid. I mean underneath as in like right under, under it. So it, it, you could see the pyramid right beside the place and it's this little village um, right underneath the pyramid. And, um, and she, she offered me, you know, like a shared kind of boutique hotel idea. Um, this architect called uh, Stefan uh, Malka, who's like quite a well-known architect, had, been, had designed the building and done some interesting stuff with it. And I went to see, you know, whether I wanted to you know, take part in, in, the, in the boutique hotel project. So um, that's the reason why I went first. But um, once I stayed there and I met the architect and I met Shireen and um, um, she introduced me to this guy called Salam. And he is like the little guru of the village and he, he loves horses. He's got like a stables and he's got like a, he took me to see all these you know, beautiful Arabian horses. And like, a, it was just that there's no, there's no traffic that you can't um, use motorbike or, or, or cars or anything up there. Everything is on horseback. So it's like, yeah, we're going back in time and it was brilliant. So anyway, I went to see the pyramids. I went to see, you know, the sphinxes. I went to see all the things that people see in, in Egypt and it's beautiful during the daytime. But the greatest thing was that Salem could, uh, obviously, because he knows everyone, he knows the police, he knows everyone, um, 
um, allowed us to go to the desert and they opened the gates and we, we could go on, on these Arabian horses to see um, the pyramids and the sphinxes and everything alone on horseback. Um, and uh, when I got to the desert at night, it was, I think it was three o'clock in the morning, the first time that we went there. Um, it was like, a, it, it looked like, I mean, the moon was so bright that you can see it's like daytime, but everything's blue. And, uh, you know, we galloped on those horses for, I don't know, 20 minutes. And, um, and then when we got to, to, to see the Sphinx and the pyramid, and we were by ourselves. And these horses go really, really super fast, you know? And um, it was surreal, the experience. It was incredible. And um, we could climb the pyramids. We could get near anything. It was like, a, it, was a, it was a beautiful um, experience. And then the horses, there's this like little oasis place where if you stop in the desert, I thought the desert would be like empty, but, um, but actually there was this oasis where all the horses go you know, to drink. And if you stop and you look around anywhere that you see in the desert, you can see camels and people um, that are trading obviously in, with spices and with different things, you know, dates, spices and, and different things. And they're constantly coming, you can see them. It's, it's an unbelievable thing, you know? And, um, but the most impressive thing was that, that these horses, the, these Arabian horses, they, they were set loose in the desert. They, they weren't like, you know, they, obviously they were well trained or whatever. And um, they're from there, so they wouldn't get tired of galloping in the, in the sand. I thought, how can they gallop for 20 minutes Keep in going. The sand, you know? And, and they loved it. They, they, loved the, they loved the experience and they were like, you know, the, the, the horses love being there because it's their natural environment. And I had this great opportunity to actually um, um, video these horses in their natural environment, like, you know, yeah. doing all this like I mean and then they, they played with each other and they were doing all this amazing stuff and um, up to now my idea of, of, of you know my idea of the horse in painting or in, in, in art or whatever was a more a human kind of you know how we how we depict our idea of the horse it's always elegant it always has its neck up its legs are up but there I realized how you know how um, these Horses were like you know incredible uh, how they moved how they how they how they how they turned their necks all the time it was it was more beautiful than any you know than any trained horse doing anything and um, I had they are part of the desert they were like um, you know they, they were in the natural environment and it, and I was lucky enough to video all this and um, but the problem was that like when I got back to Gibraltar the video looked nothing like the experience that I had over there. And it was because, because um, it was because the Cairo itself has a sweet smell in the air. The, the desert smells sweet, and then it has this like spicy. There's like a there's like a sweet and, and spice kind of mix in the air constantly in Cairo. But in the desert, at the beginning of the desert, in this oasis, in this oasis, when you get all these people coming down um, with the camels and all that stuff, it's it's really strong and. Uh, but it's amazing, really, and I wanted to to I wanted to paint that experience, the whole thing, like the desert yeah. with the horses, with with this kind of idea of the of of the smell of the air of, of the desert itself, and um, because that all of it, like you know, all of it, it it just didn't look the same in photographs at all as as when I was there. So when I looked at the photos, yeah. I thought, this is so so the concept really was. For me, it was to try and and, uh, and and have some classical compositions, which is what I usually do. So by using geomet geometrical uh, composition, uh, which is something from the past, you know, they've done it uh, in the Renaissance and, and, and after that. There's, there are many paintings, um, you know, pre-Raphaelites and all this stuff, where they divide the canvas in different ways, with triangles, with circles, with all that, and, and try and, and sit the, the, the piece in, in, a, in, 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 in a geometric form somehow. And um, so that was the first part which was, uh, that I did. And then after that, I, um, I um, tweaked a little bit like, uh, you know, the stance of the horses so that they were, um, I have a, a something, I love, I, I love classical poses and classical things really from the past. Yeah. On the other hand, um, I wanted to, to, to try and, uh, and, and create the same uh, feeling and the same aromas and smells and all that stuff that I had in the Sahara in the painting. So I used um, a more abstract palettes with color. Um, and you'll see when I show you right now how I uh, attempted to 
to have this Sahara uh, um, feeling in the painting. So yeah. I've used, for example, for the spices uh, in the air, there are bits in the painting that have colder colors um, together. And it's like a sharper, I use like sharper colors for sharper smells and warmer colors for the sweet smells in the air or the aroma. And also the desert at night when I photographed the horses, like it was nighttime, but it was like daytime at the same time. So there's a mix of day and night in the paintings as well, which is, you know, my experience of it. So that was the attempt, you know, to, to try and get the experience of, of, of smell, the experience of, of, of the feeling of the desert um, in the paintings, not like, a, you know, a horse posing or anything like that. So obviously there's movement in the work. There's the, the idea of time that I always have. But the main idea was to try and, and, and get the, the, this experience and these uh, aromas and this feeling um, in the works. Yeah, no, and I, and, I, and I agree, actually. I've obviously had a sneaky peek, um, which you will show us in a minute. You're absolutely right. So it's almost like, you know, the paintings, like you say, it's not just about the fact that it's uh, these beautiful Arabian horses that are galloping in the desert. You've actually, it's putting you, actually, you are in the canvas. You, you've taken everything from the desert, the smells. So actually, it's almost all of our sensories, aren't they? So we Yeah, well, I've, I've, I um, usually work from video, so... I take yeah. a frame, I, I, I start the painting and then I move to another frame and then I do a little bit more and I move to, and, and, I, and I get like different, basically different times at the same time. And it's like, you know, that, that idea is always with me and I try to do it in different ways. But, um, okay. but in this one, I think that uh, in this series, I think that very early on, I, 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 I left the, the imagery that I was looking at and, um, and worked directly from, from looking for the feeling that I'm telling you about of the sweet and sour kind of, uh, you know, of the spiciness and yeah. just, just of, of a recollection of it. So a lot of, a lot of the sand now in my paintings is black instead yeah. of orange and the skies are like, you know, brown and different colors. But, but really at the end, it felt the same as kind of, of what, what it felt like to me in the desert. Yeah. It's very different to, you know, maybe what, what's it's in the photos, but and also I've tried to incorporate the, the night time in a different way. Like uh, there's suddenly there's a, a piece of night, you know, somewhere. And, uh, but you know, really? that's, how I, that's how I've abstracted it somehow, yeah. No, massively, because actually it's very different. Um, it's such a thought provoking sort of um, progression, this new series, because it's very different from your last series, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Newton series, the last set that I did, I used yeah. color to, to basically the, the same uh, color, for example, blue, I used like the, the cold end of blue, where it almost goes to green, and the, and the warm end, which go, almost, almost goes to purple. I used them together somehow to, to create tension in the camera. So there was a, I used color for a different reason and in a different way. And yeah. this time it was a, a, an attempt to, to to, um, to get the, the sensation of the desert. And, and as, again, Cairo, if anybody who's been to Cairo will know that there's a, yeah. it's, it has this like really distinct, strong like smell. The desert has a smell itself. And it's, a, you know, as I said, I, and, I, and it impacted me to see these horses with all this stuff happening at the same time. And I tried to capture that. Um, it's amazing. Way. So were you out then most nights? So you say sort of between midnight and I, I think we started, we went the first night at three o'clock in the morning and then, wow. you know, but it's like daytime, like it's so bright, you know, it's, it's just, it's unbelievable. It, it it's looked like a sea. the desert looks like a sea, like, and uh, wow. it was a, first, a, a great experience. Wow. And you got to, um, I think we put a little bit of a teaser um, up for people because actually you, you did a few videos of you riding bareback on these horses. Actually, right? that, that, was only, um, that was only the first day that I got there. Um, that we did some videos and that. But then um, when we went to see the Arabian horses and uh, we, we went riding with them and all stuff, I, I couldn't, I really couldn't use them. They were so fast and so strong and all that stuff. I just couldn't hold the camera. I had to really concentrate, you know? So, um, so I didn't, I didn't uh, send any of those. Oh. You, didn't, you didn't do any of that at three in the yeah, morning? No. Uh, they looked amazing. You know, but yeah, we would go to the desert around three in the morning, I think, every day. Yeah. Wow. It was, it was amazing, yeah. That's it. What an amazing experience. 
utterly incredible and i and we'll definitely and obviously we'll we'll see those shortly for you christian um you know many years you've been painting we've seen the most magnificent collection of work what do, what what for you are the key ingredients for a piece of art you know a um, piece of art. What, what would you say tell us about that well because i because i've been a teacher really for 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 many years um in university and in yeah. I, I was uh, uh, I lectured uh, uh, you know for a little bit in the Royal College of Art and then in school here I, I've taught many girls from you know from from uh, year eight to to a level GCC all that stuff and um, and uh, painting is very easy like it's a very easy thing once you're taught you know so so for example oh. color mixing you know, so so basically taking a photograph and and learning how to copy the color right and okay. then you know making a bit of movement with a brush and all that stuff it's it, it is very easy and and um once you're taught how to do it yeah yeah um yeah. I, I i i've i've taught girls at, at gcse that that could do could paint um with the same skill as i could very very quickly in like in like a month they were they, they could you know copy and that's it so so for me like painting um painting things as you as you see them exactly you know um, is just one perspective on reality. We have a lot of senses, and we and we, we and we see things in in different ways. And you can you can use um, uh, many filters when you're looking at something. You can use something that makes you you feel strongly about, or or but but if you're not saying anything, if all you're saying is like you know I'm I'm skillful, it's it's almost like you know getting a guitar player from guitar school that learns all the chords and learns how to do lots of stuff. But if he doesn't write a good song, if there's no poetry, if it's not something that you listen to and you think, you know, this song has really touched me somehow, then like, you know, they, they're technicians. Yeah. They're like just, you know, copying. I mean, so, so I think that like, in, in my opinion anyway, every, everybody has their own opinion, but in my opinion, like there has to be, um, there has to be a, a concept, something that personally excited you something that affected you and then an attempt to bring that somehow to life you know through through your through your work it could be in many ways you know i do it in layers with colors with this and the other but there's a million ways to do it but 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 it's to bring something new a new perspective and your own your own your own your own view on it your own Absolutely. personal idea and also once you leave another thing is once you leave um the imagery like i always told my students to do this and I think it's it's a good way for anybody who who doesn't know another way to try and get themselves inside the paintings it's um once yeah. you get halfway with the yeah you know, once you've got drawn the image and got some of the colors and all that stuff the best thing is to completely leave the image and just spoil it just make one mark somewhere or do something and then you will have to respond to that you can't leave like a single mark by itself so you have to do another mark and and as, as you do every single other mark and you like decide to do a longer stroke and a shorter one, like that is already you. It's already like no one else is going to make those decisions exactly the same. So, so you begin to, to, so whatever your painting begins to be a portrait of yourself. So you're always doing, um, it always comes from, from, from within. And that is the way that I, for example, um, do it. I mean, many other artists do it. There's millions of ways to do it, but that's the way. No, that, but they do. That I You're do right. They connect with you. I mean, that's one of the key things I think is that, um, you know, your your work, it, you know, it really has that Mark Christian hook, the painting. And I think that clients and people, you know, we connect with your work. It's very, you know, and I think that's why, I think that's why, you know, you have such a huge following. Um, I, I really, I, I don't paint. I don't, I, I, I don't paint for, for the gallery, I don't paint for, for, for sales, I don't paint for any, like, I've no. never have, you know, like from the beginning, and um, it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's something that I did, I, I used to, like, really not like working anywhere, I, I, all the jobs that I tried, really, I didn't like, I mean, you know, I, <laughs> I could do them, but, like, it wasn't, there was something in me that knew that I wanted to do this, you know, like, um, yeah. and, uh, when I got the opportunity to do it, like the real reason why I wanted to do it was to be free from, from 
having a nine to five job where people were telling me what to do. And this is something that I loved. And I thought, you know, if I start listening to even the gallery, you know, the gallery people, what they want, what they, then I'm in a job again. So like, you know, I, I thought like, whether I earn a lot of money or I learn just enough to live or whatever it is, I'm gonna do like something that's real, that is what I want so I can keep it, you know, as a passion. And that's why every year I have to change everything. I never do the same thing. I have to travel, I have to, it's really to excite myself really more than, more than anything yeah. else. Yeah, no? challenge you, it's really important. Now, for me, I think it's really important. Um, now, tonight, now, yes. You're actually, because obviously you've had to work from um, home as well. Yes, um, you are now, if it's okay, we'd like to unveil some of these paintings. So you're going to now take um, all of our viewers tonight um, and collectors and everybody who's watching to come and see. Would you be able to, can you pick up your phone? Can we come and have yep. a little sneaky peek now? Okay. Thank you. So let me turn my camera around. Lovely. So this is like a, the little studio of like a, my home corner here that I'm do, using right now. And um, let me just show you my first piece. Um, so this is, um, this is my first uh, uh, equestrian piece from, and I'll show you now exactly how I've uh, done the geometrical composition and uh, the rest of the stuff. So this has uh, two, I'll show you with my finger first and then you can see them. There's one circle, there's one circle that's around the tail that's like there. I don't know if you can see. And then another one that's on the neck that goes all the way around here. So if you look now, if you divide the painting in two, you'll probably be able to see like the two circles really divided from the middle. Um, so, uh, what I do is if, if, if a part of it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't uh, symmetrically align, I'll just add a bit of color somewhere. And then um, obviously the desert doesn't look anything like this. And um, it was like brown sand with blue sky and all that stuff. But, but to get this feeling, as I said, of the smell and all the other stuff, I used, uh, I'll show you now, there's, um, there's a, a little bit of color here in the corners at the top of the horse. That is, that is my interpretation of the sweeter smells. And, um, and this is my interpretation of like the, the, the spices, the strong spices. In so, so it's an attempt to like, you notice in all the works, there's these like patches that suddenly of color, that it's an attempt to get the feeling of, of the desert, you know? Uh, so I go slowly so that you can see. Um, uh, Thank you. So this is, this is Arabian, Arabian one, isn't yeah. it? This is this the huge, it very, is, yeah. very powerful. So this is um, so, and that um, and that's kind of you know that's this one really. So if I, I hope that you. Can can see the, the composition, um, uh, the geometric uh, stuff that I was saying, and and um, all the curvature channel stuff. It, I always like um, I always alter the the horse, even even in its uh, you know, even it's if it's a little bit wrong, even if like you know um, I have to stretch it a little bit, whatever. But it sits a lot better on the canvas when it's uh, when the geometry works behind it. Yeah. So I'm yeah. um, gonna turn the camera around. Yeah, and uh, and uh, I'm going to show you now. One. Thank this you. This is very exciting. This is a little bit like Christmas Day right now. Okay, so we're all a little. <laughs> very the comments coming through. It is. It's like opening your stocking, although this would be a rather large stocking. But it's look. It, it's it's incredible. So now, now that was Arabian number yeah. one. So now we're looking yeah. at Arabian number two. In so the Arabian number two was basically I love. Um, I love George, George Stubbs and I've looked at many, many works um, of many equestrian artists from the past. And uh, I love the idea of the classical, there is, an, there is a, 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 just like in, in, in the human form, you have, uh, uh, you know, classical poses in the equestrian forms, there's classical poses. But 
I was able to see something classical that was natural in the horse. And, um, and I like the composition of this one and the simplicity of it. So I'm going to show you um, this one now. So this one, um, as you can see, is a more muted palette. Um, but I love how simple it is. I do like the simplicity of it. And, beautiful. And I like the, the, the axis of the horse. It's like off balance. And you can see there's a straight line that goes from the corner, from this top corner to all the way down to the corner at the bottom over here. And uh, the neck follows it down, you know, as a, as a diagonal. And, um, and uh, that, I think that the angle of the horse and this, I mean, the desert sand's not black, you know, the sky is not that color or anything. And also the desert is blue at night. So I actually try to add, if you see here, it's very subtle, but there's a, there's a bit of nighttime suddenly, like, you know, on the top of it, like uh, on yeah, the head. I'll show you um, a closer, a close up maybe of, of some of it. Um, so you can it's see that there are many layers on it, obviously. Um, so you see like different, sometimes you can see the bottom and sometimes um, wow. you can see bits from before that were there and so on. But this one is probably the simplest one, but I really like, um, I really like the simplicity of it. Sometimes like in like music, you know, the spaces in between are more important than, than the notes, you know, so, um, so that's yeah. like my second. Uh, Arabian yeah. too. Yeah. That, that's absolutely beautiful. Thank you. You do get that feel of the desert, don't you? I, I know what you mean when you talk about the, yeah. the palette. I mean, it looked, it, it looked nothing like that, the desert, but it's, this is like, my, you know, my, Your interpretation. my interpretation of it. Yeah, so I try to, uh, um, I get, to try and get the feeling, and the, as I said, and the, and the smells, and the day and night time, and all that stuff. So, I mean, many, many of the videos were taken at night, but the light was so strong that it's like, you know, it, so it. it's, uh, yeah, I just uh, try to get the whole experience uh, in, in the work. So I'll show you, I'm, I'm a great fan of Francis Bacon's work as well. And, um, yeah. and I like how he, you know, how he, how he has different angles and this and the other in, in his works. And, uh, and I think on this one, um, on this one, I have a, uh, I've got a little bit of that going somehow, so oh, uh, I love that. I'll show you. Um, yeah. it, again, like I've exaggerated some things, you know, the curves, uh, how they swirl around and all that stuff. I think it, it makes it, uh, um, again, it's, it's looking at classical composition and you see the diagonals, how they, how they follow through, how the, how the circles follow through. Um, so there's a classical part and then obviously there's all the abstraction to try and get the smells of the desert. I'm going to show you now. Oh, and this is, this is, um, can I just confirm for those of us watching, this is, this is Arabian number three yeah. we're looking at now. So, um, again, like, uh, again, you'll see there's, uh, there's, uh, you know, patches of color like this, um, here that like, they seem like random, you know, like, uh, that's like the nighttime there. And, um, they, they, but really it's like, a. It, the cold colors like this, um, are, as I said, like uh, the, the idea of spice and these would be the, the, the warm smell of the air um, uh, in the desert. So really I wanted to make, to combine everything, like, you know, the desert, the horse and, and the horse in its natural, I mean, these horses weren't asked to do this. It's, uh, so I think it's um, just, it's the whole desert idea, you know, like they're part of it, you know, so. Um, Absolutely. So, Absolutely. So that's the, uh, and just so say, I'll, go, I'll go and do a close-up so you can see a little bit of, uh, you know, absolutely. how it's done. Yeah. yeah. I'm just noticing the, um, you know, you talked about the Arabian horses obviously being very different to the horses that we have here. Um, yeah. And looking at the neck movement that you were talking about that they do, you've really captured that in this work, haven't you? R incredibly so. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I think I've exaggerated things a little bit, but... Uh, um, but obviously, more or less, it was like this. It's just that um, I, I, I sometimes, as I said, for the, for the sake of the composition, like um, uh, make things a little bit uh, maybe more exaggerated. But um, but obviously, the desert looked nothing like this. But I, as I said, um, it's it's my idea of, of it's also the mixing. It's also the mixing of abstraction with the, with reality somehow. You know, it's a it's a 
it's yes. my way of, 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 of making the two work, the, the, uh, gel together or, or, or live together in the same canvas, you know? So Absolutely. that's... Uh, but that, I mean, that's what, what you're kind of a genius at. Being able to do that is really, thank it's you. so important. But that's also about what we were talking about <laughs> earlier, which is how it makes your signature style. You know, this is, you know, people aren't looking at right now. Our clients don't purchase just a painting of a horse. They're actually buying a piece of you. You know, this is, this is your interpretation, your, your feelings, everything, your passion, everything is within this work, which is, there's a lot behind that painting. Yeah. There's a lot, <laughs> a lot Thank of hard work. It's so I'm going to show you a couple of others. So these are smaller works, but anyway, like, uh, I'll show yeah. you. Um. So if I'm right, are these the, the next two, which would be Arabian four yeah. and five? So are this are one. Al aluminium, Christian. Yeah, these are things that are aluminium. But um, uh, again, like, you know, as I said, the, the, the desert at night was completely blue. Um, so I have, you know, the night time dripping on the head or something. Um, and, uh, and these are like the spices somehow. Like, you know, for me, I just... As I said, it was just trying to get that feeling in, in of what I was saying. Um, but if you look at the direction of the legs as they go up, um, about it is the diagonal um, line that goes from one corner to the other that the ear and the leg, you know, take you through, and the way the horse sits, um, um, and you know, it, it it's never like you know, it's never an accurate painting of anything because it's, you know, it's always bits, you know, leaving and coming back in and uh, it's, a, it's, it's a, to destroy the thing. But again, this is my idea of a spice smell, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and this here, you know, it's, uh, so that would be like a, what, I, what I envisaged as a feeling ch translated into some kind of color. And, um, and as you can see, like, you know, this would be a leg, you know, from near, I don't know if you can see anything, but like, uh, but when you move her far away, it becomes something, you know, so um, that's yeah. how it's all done in, it's all about destroying and then rebuilding and then destroying and then, yeah, but. Um, and then the, rebuilding. The destruction of it, I find uh, a lot of the times. Oh, you know, one of, destruction, one of the I find a uh, surprise. And so. I destroy yeah. something and then the next day, you know, I'm surprised by what I did because it's a surprise because I didn't, because I carelessly destroyed what I was doing. And um, if I cannot surprise myself, then, th then the work uh, cannot be exciting. It's just impossible for it to be exciting if I know what's going to happen. So from the beginning to the end of each work, I have absolutely no idea how it's going to end up. And that is what makes me want to paint. If not, yeah. I would be really bored. Like, you know, that it's the fact that I just, every day the painting changes and changes and changes until one day I walk in and I think that's it. You know, I, I kind of achieved whatever concept I am trying to create, yeah? That's amazing. And just, you know, because obviously we, we, we know that your work, you have yeah. a lot of movement in your work. Yeah. Uh, movement's obviously really, really important for you with your work, especially yeah. when you're in a subject like equine. How do you, how do you, gosh, that's lovely. How do you achieve that? How, how do you get that? Is it just the layering or? Um, I think that it's, uh, the, the movement is like lots of things. I think it's uh, the working from different, uh, um, working from different uh, uh, video stills. Um, so I, I let the video run and then I paint again and then I let the video run. So it's never really like from one, flat image and on top of that you know i i i tend to um i tend to leave leave the image with with color with paint so um things are never in the right place and i just like i, I it's basically a destructive process that that makes it exciting to me so um look if you look um here for example the paint just uh, stops and that's it and you can see the under under painting completely um there's no really no tail um there's no, um, it, there's many bits of the horse are missing. Um, there's a, I mean, the legs, if you look at it, that's not really painted. It's like, um, there's the underpainting there. There's no head. I mean, it's a beginning of a head, but like, uh, but you know, it, 
and then but then when you move back you you, you kind of um again the blue and it's like gold the gold is painted on the mylar so when i move down you can see um how the gold changes you see it's, that, um, that's magnificent so we we're now looking at arabian six aren't we and now seven yeah. now so i'll show you this one from near as well so you can see um these are quite small but they're very reflective um yeah they're really powerful Th this is on because this is a big change now because this is on the medium mylar isn't yeah. it you love. Yeah. um this is my layer this is my it's a reflective uh medium but um again like uh it's it's a great way of uh, uh, a great thing where you can mix um and use different things on it um, because it's so smooth and reflective, you know, the surface. So, um, uh, yeah. So again, like the, the change in colors and the change in, in, in everything else like what, that you can see is, uh, is, um, is done in different, in different ways, in different layers. But I, I'm trying to get like the, the feeling of this one was at sunset in the desert. And, uh, you know, I want the sunset on top of the horse and like, the horse behind the sunset and like, you know, and, all, and it was, uh, more, as I said, that there's, there's for, for the smell of spice and for the smell of, and the warm smells of, of the desert, I, I use different, you know, patches of color uh, in different places. So, and that is um, kind of how I, you know, how I, how I did them. It was, it was more like, you know, trying to capture a feeling um, than, than the horse itself. So, I mean, I never saw the desert like this, you know, like uh, with the, this one is the only one I think that has like a golden sand or something at the bottom, but um, it was never black or it was never um, like this. And the horses really like, you know, how they disappear and they appear and all that stuff. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, um, it's just an idea like that I had that I wanted to, to portray. It's, it honestly, so. it's incredible. And, and that's right. I know with Mylar, you're really, yeah. uh, you, you tell us, but I remembered from before you saying that the, the amazing thing with the media mylar is that you can paint from the back, obviously, and and from the front, right, to create a very different uh, feeling. You can create, paint from both yeah, sides. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you you can yeah, you can paint on both sides. I usually um, paint on the front of it because obviously um, it's difficult to paint, you know. Yeah, from, from the back. back. But there's some bits that I that I've that I've done that on. Um, but really, like technique for me, or like you know where um, technique is 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 not. Really, I don't really. Um, I mean, it's important. You have to have some kind of way of. But it's it's a it's a. It has to uh, go with a concept or an idea that you are you are that you are trying to to in my to to try to express somehow. So okay. so it's not just like you know I wanna put some patch I mean you can do that but um, yeah in my opinion in what in what I consider to be to keep myself interested um, I like uh, you know I like exploring a concept and then trying to trying to uh, get as much out of the concept as I can and then I move to the next uh, concept and also I have a, a sketchbook where I don't sketch on it but I, I I put lots of ideas down I write every idea that I have got enough ideas for, you know, for eternity, probably. Wow. But, um, I've got lots of ideas, but I never do them because once I've, once I've worked it out, the idea, then it's not exciting anymore. So usually, like, I, when I finish a project, okay. I choose whatever is exciting in, or whatever I'm looking at that excites me in that moment, and that's it. So I usually prepare lots of stuff and then abandon the whole thing yeah, and, then abandon. and start something new, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. But that's the challenge, isn't it? I think that, that's the, the challenge for you. And like you say, it's got to be exciting. Yeah. Um, that... I'm also um, working on a documentary now. Um, ah, yeah. is this your teaser? So yeah. nobody knows about this. So no. this is you're going to give us a little teaser, right, as to what yes. what's happening for the future. I have another. I have another uh, great thing happening in in two weeks or in a week and a half, which I'll let you know soon that you can put on oh. the on the Clarendon site um, that I'm doing. Um, uh, that I'm, Thank that you. I'm doing very you shortly. Know about that? It's, it's know an about exciting, that? it's an exciting project, yeah. Okay. But um, but I've just finished the, I've just finished a documentary um, which was a really interesting one. Again, again, it was completely based on concept, and uh, I, I've been reading these uh, scientific books from on Carlo Rovelli. Um, he he wrote a book on 
called uh, uh, Seven Laws in Physics. Um, and uh, it, was a, it was actually sold more copies in Italy than Fifty Shades of Grey when it came out. So and, uh, I, I, I thought Seven what? Brief Lessons in Physics, I mean, with that title, I thought, like, how can, how can, you know, how can it sell more than, than you know. <laughs> but, but I, so I read it and then he wrote The Order of Time. And when he wrote The Order of Time and I read that book, I was like blown away. So whilst I was in uh, Paris, I called him up. I asked, like, you know, my, my, my I actually saw in, 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 in Paris, there was like the Telegraph or something there. Yeah. And it had um, uh, in the cover, uh, like a, a little article on him saying that he'd become like the new Hawkins. He, he was like, you know, one of the top or the top scientists on these wow. ideas of, of the universe and all that stuff. So I got one of the guys in my team to call him and I, I called him whilst I was in Paris and he was in Marseille and I was going to go and visit him, but he, he was, he was traveling to Africa or something at the time, but he remembered our conversation. I told him that I loved his book and I wanted to work with him at some point in something. And he said that, that he would. So, that was great. 